Good evening, visitors, and thank you for your patience. Welcome to the Australian War Memorial's last post ceremony. My name is Chris Weidenbar, and joining us today from the Royal Australian Navy is Warrant Officer Nikolai Rofe. We welcome the veterans who have served, those who are still serving, and the families that love and support them. We acknowledge the members of RSLs and Services Clubs Association, RSL Victoria and RSL Queensland who are watching the broadcast of this ceremony across Australia. During this evening's ceremony, reeds will be laid at the base of the Pool of Reflection by visitors to the memorial and by students on behalf of the following schools from Queensland. Meriden College, Meriden Plains, and the Mount Isa School of the Air, Mount Isa. I now ask all who are able to please stand and join in singing the national anthem. Thank you. Students, you may be seated. The Australian War Memorial was the vision of Charles Bean, Australia's first World War official historian. Bean landed with the Australian troops on Gallipoli and stayed with them at the front through to the end of the war. The idea of this national memorial and museum came to him at Pozier, France in the depths of the bloody fighting of 1916. Bean's idea was that this would be a place where families and friends could mourn loved ones buried in faraway lands. It would also be a place that could help all Australians understand what these men and women had endured and what they had done for us. Bean's vision, to which we remain true, is best expressed as inscribed in the entrance to the memorial's galleries. Here is their spirit in the heart of the land they loved. And here we guard the record which they themselves made. Tonight, we will read the story behind just one of those on the Roll of Honour, which lists the names of more than 102,000 men and women who have given their lives for us in war and operations for more than a century. But first, we present a lament, Flowers of the Forest. Reeds or floral tributes will now be laid at the base of the Pool of Reflection.
Today, we remember and pay tribute to Private Alexander Thomas Abassi. Alexander Thomas Abassi was born on the 21st of July, 1896 in Ballarat, Victoria. The eldest child of Elias Abassi, a Syrian migrant, and Sarah Jane Wallace. When Alexander was young, his parents separated and he moved to Melbourne with his mother and two sisters. His mother later remarried and he grew up with several stepbrothers and sisters. Abassi was educated at a number of schools across Melbourne and later worked as a labourer and lift attendant. Before the war, he gained valuable military experience by serving in the senior cadets and a local militia force. Abassi enlisted in the Australian Imperial Force on the 14th of July, 1915, and began training with reinforcements of the 6th Infantry Battalion. In November, he sailed from Melbourne aboard the transport ship Nesto. Being too late to serve in Gallipoli, he instead sailed for Egypt, where Australian forces were preparing for war in Palestine or on the Western Front. Abassi joined the 6th Battalion in early January 1916, and after a brief period in hospital, sailed for France and on the war on the Western Front. Shortly after arriving in Marseille, Abassi and the 6th Battalion transferred to Northern France, where they trained and rested behind the lines at saint Omer and Bayeux. He had his first experience of frontline service at Fleurbeau, near the French-Belgium border. In a letter home, he wrote that life in the trenches was uncomfortable and that the rats were, were as big as kittens. While he didn't mind the intermittent rifle fire, when he came under German artillery shelling, it was particularly difficult. On the 23rd of July, 1916, Abassi and the 6th Battalion took part in the Battle of Poissier, an attempt to recapture a town lost to German forces. In this battle, which lasted several weeks, German, Australian forces suffered 23,000 casualties, 6,800 of whom were killed. On the 23rd of July, 1916, Abassi and his unit took part in the battle, supplying food, water, ammunition to Australian troops serving in the frontline trenches. This was dangerous work, and the men came under intermittent German machine gun fire and artillery shelling. At some point during the day, Abassi received wounds so serious that he was taken to the number one Australian field ambulance. He died soon after arrival. He was 20 years old. He was deeply mourned by his family and friends who left a poem in a local newspaper. He felt it was his duty to take a noble part. There was no fear of danger in his brave and loyal heart. He is buried in the Wally Bayonne Communal Cemetery Extension in France, where over 1,300 soldiers of the First World War now lie. Private Alexander Thomas Abassi's name is listed on the Roll of Honour on my right, among almost 62,000 Australians who died while serving in the First World War. A photograph of his headstone is displayed today besides the pool of reflection. This is but one of many of stories of service and sacrifice told here at the Australian War Memorial. We now remember Private Alexander Thomas Abassi, who gave his life for us, for our freedoms and in the hope of a better world. Please stand for the reading of the ode and the sounding of the last post. They shall grow not old as we that are left to grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them.
Lest we forget. Lest we forget. We leave you this evening with the words of the memorial's founder, Charles Bean. Many a man lying out there at Pozier or in the low scrub at Gallipoli with his poor tired senses barely working through the fever of his brain has thought in his last moments, well, well it's over. But in Australia, they will be proud of this. Ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, that concludes the last post ceremony. We thank you for visiting the Australian War Memorial and wish you all a good evening.